Wait, you have to restart. I didn't press the go. Okay. Tell me, tell me when to throw. Okay. Tell me when to go. All right, we are good. We are live. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm the village supervisor here at Wildlife Safari. I'm also one of the White Sheet Gibbon primary trainers. And today we're stopping to say hi for our 11 o'clock animal talk. Uh, with our white cheek Gibbon brothers. So Tini and Gong have lived here at Wildlife Safari for about a couple, or about two years, almost three. Um, they came to us from Brookfield. <laughs> Gong is the smaller one who just swung away. He's six years old, and then his brother Tini is the one still hanging out right behind us. Um, he's eight years old. So they came to us from Brookfield uh, as part of a species survival plan, or SSP. Um, and even though we're not a breeding facility, these guys are critically endangered in the wild. And so facility, AZA facilities across the country um, are breeding these guys pretty regularly. So even though we're not breeding here at the park, um, these guys could be called upon in the future to be breeding males, which means that uh, we'll have to ship one of them out and bring a partner for the one um, back here. So lucky for us though, they came as brothers. Um, so they already knew each other. They came in the same exact time. So um, we didn't even have to introduce them at all. They were already friends, which really helps. Um, and these guys are native to Southeast Asia. Um, you can see them pretty heavily in Vietnam. And being critically endangered is mostly due to habitat loss. Um, so we're really fortunate to have them here. So as you can see, we have snacks <laughs> flying. <laughs> Uh, towards the Gibbons, these guys are fed at least two to three times a day, so we break up their food throughout the day. They get fresh produce that's all human quality. We have a really awesome program with Costco where we get donations from them, also a grocery outlet, and we um, purchase food as well, so it's all human quality. Oh yeah, we're, this is, happens all the time too. Tinny is the dominant male, so he always kind of tells little brother what's up. Um, he kind of just reminds him that he's the big brother. So these guys are fed fresh produce every day as well as Missouri primate biscuits as a rounded out healthy diet. Um, so today we brought some of their favorite snacks down to bring them closer so you guys can all see them closer. Uh, so we have grapes, tomatoes, and carrots. They love those. Um, they also really love bananas, mostly fruit. Um, and then we also feed them a lot of leafy greens like lettuce and spinach um, just to have a really healthy diet. They also are fed hard boiled eggs twice a week. Um, just for that extra protein in their diet. So it's all human human grade, like we could eat it if we wanted to. We have people watching from Kentucky and Arkansas. Wow, ah, that's so awesome! Hey, welcome from Oregon! <laughs> <laughs> so Wildlife Safari, for those of you guys who don't know, um, we're located in Winston, Oregon, which is Southern Oregon, so it's kind of showing off the Pacific Northwest weather right now at this kind of drizzly day. Uh, also for the sky. <laughs> um, and the Gibbons really love the springtime, especially this time where it's sunny. Um, sometimes <laughs> they come out and hang out outside a lot. They love to play around on their exhibit and their island. Um, and one of the things we like to do is forage feed them, so kind of throwing out food like what we're doing right now, because um, that's a natural behavior. Some other enrichment you might see on the island is like boxes that have been left behind. Um, we like to give them different aspects of how to find their food. So sometimes it's puzzle feeders, sometimes it's in boxes. We also give them scents or new things. It's all to help keep them mentally stimulated. So they're given enrichment two to three times a day as well as trained at least two times a day. Um, they're trained different behaviors that help them participate in their own husbandry and healthcare. So they're trained to present both hands, their tongue, their feet, their chest, and hip presents for hip injections in case they ever had to go see the vet um, under anesthesia. <laughs> the vet does come and see them pretty regularly um, and they're able to train all those behaviors too so they can do a real physical exam without having to have them under anesthesia. But yeah, if you guys don't have any questions, feel free to ask them out. Leela, our education director, will shout them out to me so I can answer them, hopefully, uh, as we do this little presentation. Um, these guys are one of my favorite animals that I get to work with here. Um, they are lesser apes, so they're not in the great ape ca category, but they are a lesser apes, so they're pretty intelligent. Gibbons also have their own specific way of movement, so their, long, their arms are about double the length of their body, and that's because they move through their arms. It's actually really funny and awkward when they walk, like, <laughs> on their feet, because they just look really weird and awkward. Christina wants to know how old they are. Yeah, so Tani is eight, and 
and Gung is six. So they're um, still pretty young. They've got a full life ahead of them. It, um, in human care, they can live up into their 40s, but the average is around 20 to 25. So they'll be here for a while. Uh, Sarah would like to know if they're able to swim and if they've ever tried oh, to swim across question. this island. <laughs> so actually, most non-human primates do not like to swim. I say most because some still do. Um, the gibbons are one that love to stay in the trees. That's where their long arms come from. So they are actually really afraid of water, which makes this exhibit really awesome for them as a habitat because they don't have to have... Um, any other barrier than just this water barrier so it's a lot more natural looking and a lot more natural for them and us too um and it makes it easier for people to see them in the drive through and remind us of their names again tani and gung so tani is spelled t-h-a-n-i and gung is actually spelled c-u-o-n-g um this is just the pronunciation of the region that they're from in vietnam and how many times a day do they eat we feed them at least two to three times a day. Um, we started implementing middays with gibbons, so lunches, um, just because in the wild they wouldn't eat, you know, breakfast and dinner. They'd be eating throughout the day. So we come out at least three times a day just to give them extra, or to give them their diets that are prepared daily for them throughout the day. And we use a lot of the fruit and the good stuff. Like Gung really loves cherry tomatoes, so we use a lot of that stuff for the training. And um, we do training with them two to three times a day as well. You can see our keepers are throwing some treats from <laughs> from behind me here, and they're really, really good catchers. Yeah, yeah they can really catch their treats pretty well. I know, um, too, last year when we had the snowstorm, um, we were throwing snowballs at them, and they'd never experienced snow before, and so they were catching the snowballs and, and having fun. Yeah, eating the snow and having fun with that. Yeah. It was a really fun experience for them. They're also really good at telling if they want what we're throwing or what if they don't want it. So you can watch Tani, he's not really into the cherry tomatoes, so he'll just watch those fly by him. Whereas if they're throwing grapes, he's like, gotcha, like grabs those really quickly with his really good um, eyesight and dexterity with his hands. Daniel would like to say hi to Duke the goat. Okay, well the goats are coming up. I don't know if it's this week or next week, but we've got a really awesome schedule. We just don't want to give it away. So you guys tune in every day at 11. Um, but don't worry, the goats are on the schedule. You'll just have to tune in and see which day it is. <laughs> um, we have but, a question from Teresa. She wants sure. to know like, how noisy they are. Ah, that's a really good question. So um, these guys are actually pretty quiet. Um, you can hear them most in the morning. So when Village, I know Village is closed right now, but when we reopen at 8 a.m., um, I highly suggest coming then because you can hear the boys calling. It's more of a territorial call. I'm just letting other gibbons know, even though we don't have any other gibbons, that they're in the area. Um, but you can hear them really well in the morning. But once we're here and once the park is usually open with the drive through um, they're pretty quiet. And even with us, uh, sometimes they'll make like what we call happy gibbon sounds. It's very high pitched, like whoop, 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 like that. What was that again? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoop, 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 whoop. It's like you can like get them to kind of do it back to you, but these guys aren't very vocal. Um, gibbons I've worked with previously were a lot more vocal um, and made a lot more of those like happy gibbon sounds at us when we came. But these boys are pretty quiet. Uh, they do make happy gibbon sounds just really quietly. Um, so they're not as loud as other gibbons um, that I've worked with previously. But they still call in the morning, like I said. It's a very, um, or like, uh, in the morning. <laughs> I tried to imitate it for you, but <laughs> obviously I'm not a Gibbon, so I can't do it. We have people checking in from all over South Carolina so awesome. and Salem and Yay. Fairview, Oregon. This is well, amazing. Welcome, welcome. The sun kind of just peeked back out. So it's, really, it's been an awesome day so far, and the Gibbons really love this weather where it's a little bit warmer, and um, they have more green grass that they like to bring. Um, Christina wants to know if they're affectionate at all with humans. So that's a good question. Um, the boys are not as affectionate. I have worked with a female white cheek gibbon in the past who really liked uh, human attention, but the boys are really more into just gibbon interaction. Um, right before we started this video, they were actually grooming each other, which they do pretty well. Um, with their teeth and their fingers, they'll groom each other, which is part of it. Um, Tinny has started to want more human interaction, um, but overall they just see us as the food deliverers. 
<laughs> Ansley's saying hi. Hi, hi Ansley. Ansley. <laughs> We have some former Hi. former Isn't interns it? checking in as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Should come back and visit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when this whole thing's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys have any other questions? They're showing off the really awesome movements for you guys. Maybe you want to talk about how you're we're raising oh, yeah. some funds for Yeah, so a while we wait for a few more questions to pop in. Um, so one thing that we're doing at Wildlife Safari, we are a nonprofit organization. So we're actually accepting donations to help us. The village team in particular is trying to um, fundraise for a new Gibbon house. Um, these guys are, uh, we're just trying to give them a more updated space. Um, so they, um, we've been yeah, fundraising. We do bingo at Too Shy, our local brewery, um, every month. And we do different things to organize for them. But yeah, we're fundraising currently to kind of update this island for them um, so that we can make it even better than it already is. Yeah. <laughs> and again, this is Tani and Gung. They live in the Asia section of our drive through part of Wildlife Safari. Um, you can see them right before you hit the elephant expansion, they're off to the right, and then once you come back around from seeing the elephants, you'll see them again on the right um, in that Asia section of the drive through What region do gibbons come from? Yeah, great question. They are from Southeast Asia. Um, they're pretty prevalent in Vietnam, so I know Leela even went and worked with gibbons um, about a year and a half ago, which is pretty cool. She brought back a lot of information. Um, so that's where they're from, and then here uh, there are several wild or uh, animal facilities in the country that have gibbons um, to really show off how cool they are and how important they are too. How do you tell these two brothers apart? <laughs> well, <laughs> we have some pretty funny ways, um, but uh, Tani is a lot bigger than Gung. Um, we also joke that Gung, even though he's the younger brother, has like a more grumpy. <laughs> so this is Tani right here, for yeah. those of you wondering. Yeah. This is uh, the older Tini brother. Tani also has a snaggle tooth, so sometimes <laughs> on one of his bottom canines you can kind of see it maybe. There, his um, tooth is kind of sticking <laughs> out there. It kind of sticks out. Um, he also has a deviated septum, just that's how he's always been. I mean, a lot of keeper staff call it a Squidward nose. Um, so that's like the main two ways we can tell Tinny apart other than the size. Um, Gung still looks very babyish. Um, he's got a really young looking face. Um, and then he always is like, he's got some serious eyebrows that he uses to express how he's feeling. But we always joke that he always looks so grumpy, but he's usually like the very calm and like <laughs> excited one. So here's Tani and then here is Gung. Yeah, yeah. Hard to see because they're like looking for snacks. <laughs> Do they have any natural predators? Sarah would like to know. Uh, yes. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, in the wild, I mean, their number one predator would be, you know, habitat loss would actually be humans. Yeah. Um, and when they're younger, they're sometimes with apes is cannibalism <laughs> with territory wars and things like mm -hmm. that but i would say humans are their biggest threat and how much do they sleep um they're pretty active during the day so they're like us and sleep at night um sometimes they might take afternoon naps but i mean i do too so <laughs> so they don't have to sleep like nearly as often as let's say our giant ant eater who sleeps 20 hours a day but um, these guys are like us and are pretty active during the day and sleep mostly at night. Um, I don't think I've ever come out to the island where they're taking a nap. They're always out and about doing things during the day, looking for snacks. I know we have some wild blackberries that grow on their island, so they forage those all the time in the summer. So they're pretty busy. They've got lots of things to do during the day. <laughs> and Alicia wants to know how long you've worked here. I've worked here for almost five years and I've loved every minute of it. <laughs> I feel super fortunate that I get to work with animals like the white cheek gibbons on a daily basis. Um, it's really taught me a lot about animal training too, especially with them because they are so intelligent. Um, it really challenges you in coming up with creative ways to train animals. Tyler wants to know if you could have one of these as a pet. Ooh, good question. So 
Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely and not. <laughs> even if you could, I would definitely say you never would want to. These guys are super intelligent, can become, um, they are considered a dangerous animal, especially um, in animal facilities. That's why we always work them protected contact. Why I'm not on the island with them is because they are pretty dangerous and can be to humans. Um, and because they're a primate, they need a lot of socialization, and that socialization socialization is better when it comes from another gibbon. On top of that, they um, have something that's called zoonotic diseases, yes. which is a disease that can be transferred from human to animal or animal to human. Yeah. So even when we work with them, we are constantly wearing gloves and protective equipment like that so that we don't transfer any diseases to them and vice versa. Yes. <laughs> Do we ever play music for them? Yeah! <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, we do. Um, they don't really seem to be into it as much as other animals that we work with, but we do play music for them. Sometimes we even play like natural sounds, like jungle sounds that maybe they would hear in their na natural environment. We've even played other gibbon calls to them. Um, like I said, these guys aren't very loud, so even when we've played other gibbon sounds, they just kind of like tilt their head and like listen, but they don't call back or any make any sounds back towards us. Um, but we play like radio, um, like I said, natural sounds. And we've showed them videos before too. Yeah, yeah, like, YouTube videos. <laughs> we played movies for them and yeah. stuff. <laughs> Heather wants to know if the drive through is going to remain open after today. As of now, the drive through is completely open and we are just waiting for any other news. But right now, our drive through is fully open, yes. Encounters are not open though, so just driving through exactly. and seeing the animals in the drive through We are still selling feed cups to feed the animals, however all of our animal enrichment encounters are closed at the moment. Oh, they want to know if the Christmas tree is a toy. <laughs> yeah, so um, the Christmas tree is kind of, I guess, left over from Christmas, but it's still green. <laughs> so. Um, we were fortunate enough for local families to donate their Christmas tree to Christmas trees to us to give to different animals as enrichment. Um, so we threw one to the boys, and they were very scared of it at first, but now they don't mind it. And sometimes when we're doing that foraging thing, like I know I purposely will throw food into the Christmas tree, so they have to go find it. Um, but at first they were like terrified of why I just threw a tree on their island. <laughs> and then now they've become more comfortable with it. Um, yeah, but you can see that they're even like moving rocks and stuff. So it's really fun to throw their food in different locations. So that's why we've left the Christmas trees. It's really fun to throw snacks in there. <laughs> then they have to be real gibbons and find their food. <laughs> and Jessica, we have two of these guys at our park. Yeah, just just to let you know. Just the two boys. Just two. And of what's them. really cool, I forgot to mention, is there are, is sexual dimorphism in um, the gibbons, and what that means is that there are differences between males and females. So males are typically larger than females, but males are also all black with the white cheeks, and then females are actually kind of the opposite. They're more of a blonde, strawberry blonde color with um, black on the top of their head that goes down to the neck. Um, so they don't have the white cheeks like the males do. Um, but they're kind of opposite colors of each other. Um, but we don't have any females here at Wildlife Safari. Just the brothers. <laughs> Which is just as fun. It's really cool to watch them move too because their hands are almost permanently curved. The way their um, fingers work and that helps them to swing through the trees. If you can see the way they're grabbing onto the um, branches or the, the poles up there, that's a completely natural behavior and that's to allow them to swing through. Um, they're also able to rotate their shoulders differently than we can um, so that it allows them to move easier through their habitat. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if they went on the ground so you could see how awkward it is. <laughs> I was hoping there's a bunch of, we brought cashews because they really like those. Um, there's a bunch of cashews like right on the bank of the island so I was really hoping that one of them would like wander <laughs> down to see you. but. Elizabeth says, hi, monkeys. <laughs> or her two-year-old says, hi, monkeys. <laughs> and so just as a little, um, I guess, educational point here, because these guys don't have tails, they're actually not monkeys. They are apes. They're yeah. called lesser apes. So that's kind of a fun way to remember. Um, apes don't have tails and monkeys have tails. Um, Christina wants to know if we're planning on getting any females. Um, not at this time. So we are not a breeding facility for gibbons. Um, 
like I mentioned before with the SSP, so we're more of a holding facility. So if one of them was asked from that species survival plan um, to be a breeding male, we would most likely ship that male out of here um, so that they could be, start a family somewhere else. And then we would bring in a partner, whether that's another male or a female that we would most likely um, have on birth control here. Um, we just don't have the facilities to be a breeding facility for gibbons. Um, but being a holding facility is just as important because that makes space for the facilities that can breed um, have the space to do so. Um, so it's just as important. It's just a different aspect of what it takes to have healthy populations of animals in AZA um, animal care areas. And Heather, yes, to answer your question, these guys are brothers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, um, they're two years apart, and Teddy is the older brother and likes to remind Gung that he is the older brother. <laughs> Jane wants to know if they have the same amount of muscles in their arms as humans do, and I, I could I honestly say so. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I believe so, they're just, um, they're just... They're like, almost like double, not double jointed, but they're able to... Yeah, like I forgot the correct term for the shoulder aspect, mm -hmm. but um, they are like basically all upper body strength, so I think their muscles are just a lot more, um, they're a lot elongated because their arms are so long. So their they're names, all upper body. Their names again are Tani and Gung. Tani is the older brother and Gung is the younger one. They are two years apart. You can and see his grumpy face if you zoom in. This one here. This is young on top. This um, is the younger brother. He still kind of looks really young and like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Oh yeah, he loves doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, every time he's full, he just lays out and soaks up the sun when he can. Um, but Kate, he has some oh, furrowed sorry. eyebrows that really are easy to identify him. And Kate, to answer your question, uh, these guys came from the Brookfield Zoo. In Chicago. In Chicago, yes. And Ella would like to know what their favorite food is. I would have to say bananas. If, if we go out of their diet day to day, I would say bananas. Which is kind of ironic because we always yeah, but <laughs> associate primates yeah, with eating bananas. Yeah, right? <laughs> but sometimes uh, we bring out other fun snacks and they really love Fruit Loops, but they like to eat every color except red. I think it's red is the one they eat last. That's so fun. Um, and then they also really like popcorn. <laughs> unsalted of course unsalted and unbuttered just plain popcorn but they love fruit loops and popcorn is like fun enrichment snacks so jessica wants to know how big this island is and it is pretty sizable so if you see the whole river that's kind of around it when we scroll through i don't i don't know how big the footage is like... in terms yeah in terms of square footage i'm not sure but it is quite large for them I would say the house inside is pretty large too. It's it got a lot of vertical space, mm -hmm. um, so that, which is really good for them. And same with the square footage of the island. We, like what's most important is the vertical space that they have because they're gonna spend most of their time up on, um, like I call that little like sun deck area the upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> they spend a lot of time upstairs and then they spend um, a lot of time up on the poles, like sunbathing and th and grooming each other. Um, and kind of just observing what's going on in the drive through uh, They spend most of their time up off the ground. And again, what is their lifespan and how old are they? Uh, so Tani is eight, Gung is six. Um, the average lifespan, I believe, in animal care facilities is around 20, 25. Um, but just like humans, there are gibbons that live longer than even that. And I believe they can live like into their 30s, 40s even. But... Sammy would like to know if they could vocalize. They could if they wanted to. Yeah, great question. So these guys, I would say they're the quietest gibbons I've ever had the fortune of working with. Um, they do call in the morning, uh, usually before the park opens, but also like right at 8 a.m. So that's why um, I would definitely recommend when Village reopens to come visit us right at 8 a.m. because you might catch them um, sing, like calling or singing. Uh, but other than that, they're pretty quiet. They don't vocalize that much during the day. Um, and even like gibbons I've worked with previously make like happier sounds like when we're, they're getting fed and trained. These guys make them too, but they're a lot quieter about it. They just make little 
quiet, whispery <laughs> sounds, um, which is really exciting. It still is telling us that they're content and excited to train and things like that, um, but they're just not as loud. All right, we're going to take one more question <laughs> before we sign off. Um, does anyone have one last question that they'd like to answer or they'd like answered? Okay, I guess Shannon Gonzalez would like to know uh, if they can swim. Yeah, good question. So, um, luckily for us, uh, they can't. So, most non-human primates actually prefer not to swim. I say most because some still do. Um, but these guys are actually terrified of water, which makes a really great natural barrier for them. So, it makes it so we don't have to have fences or anything else up in front, um, which is really nice because it's more natural for them, more natural to see them for us. Um, but it also helps keep them naturally on the island that they live on. Um, so every day, uh, because they don't like water, we wear um, rubber boots to walk across the island. There is an underwater bridge that we walk across to get over here. Um, so we don't have to swim. That would really Yeah, we're actually standing in water yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> to film for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a really great natural barrier. Sometimes they get animals that like water to visit them. Um, like I know there's a Canada goose that's decided that this is a really great place to lay a nest. Um, sometimes the sika deer that are in our Asia section as well, they'll come over in the summer, especially when it's hot. They'll come like wade into the water and eat all the water plants and then they'll come onto the island and help clean that up too. Um, so sometimes they get visitors that like water, but they're still too terrified to um, cross it themselves, which is really great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate yes. um, your support and uh, coming to see our gibbons. And tomorrow we will be filming some large carnivores, but I'm not going to tell you which ones because you have to, to sign in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, to learn more about our large carnivores. Yeah. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.